Hey guys, Matt here from Loon Outdoors. Today we're going to be tying a uh, Merican Intruder. This is a uh, special fly for the 4th of July. It's uh, specifically designed to target American steelhead. So we're going to start out with the OPST shank and the vise. We're going to have it bent over to length. and We're going to be using some 50 denier uh, GSP thread. We're going to use a red and silver eye for this pattern. It's going to really add to the uh, aesthetics here for the 4th of July. So once we get the eyes secured in there, we're going to go ahead and uh, start wrapping backwards. One quick way to secure your eyes though is to use some uh, flow on it. It really does quite a good job. And obviously this intruder can be changed as far as a uh, Colors go, make it look more uh, steelheady if you'd if you'd like. So we'll wrap back down the shank of the hook, get to the point where we uh, feel that we want the body length to be. It's the great thing about these shanks is they uh, you know offer you a pretty wide range of uh, tying surface to work with. So we're going to go ahead and attach our red Senyo's intruder wire. Now you don't want this thing to be hanging back there like a foot. Um, I have seen poor hooking of fish when it's uh, you know out there too far and most of that isn't that the fish doesn't get hooked but you're you're hooking it in the wrong spot because when it's grabbing the fly it's grabbing you know maybe towards the head of the fly something like that and uh, you end up hooking it on the outside of the face which uh, is kind of not cool. So I like to leave it just big enough to be able to pass a uh, octopus or a you know stinger style hook through there. And uh, once we wrap forward, you see we do a lot of uh, turns completely covering the wire. Let me go ahead and uh, fold it back over. Now I don't I don't glue. Um, I feel that with the fold over and the overlap with the GSP thread that is going to hold nice and tight. So I'll just take some quick turns back over that guy. And you really want to smooth out by where that thread or the wire was cut. So once we work our way back to the, the you know, end of the shank of the fly here, we're going to bring in some steely blue eye stub from Hairline. It's ICE 23. Um, it's one of my favorite colors um, for when, you know, you're tying traditional steelhead styled stuff. But it works great for the 4th of July as well, as you can tell. Next up. This is uh, some silver pheasant. It's dyed like a deep red. And again, this is a great steelhead color for the right applications in the right watersheds. Um, but today we're just going to have a little bit of fun and we're going to use this to represent an American flag on this intruder. So I'm going to tie it in tip first, making sure it's super secure. And then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, Palmer through this feather. Now this is going to help some of our uh, tailing fibers stand up and kind of create some more profile, but also aid in that uh, the way it's going to teardrop around the uh, trailer hook. And once we feel like we have enough, you can go ahead and stop palmering. We'll trim off the excess. I'll take a few securing wraps back over the stem of the silver pheasant feather just to make sure it's never going to go anywhere. Next up, this is some royal blue ostrich. It's a uh, pretty good plume. And we're going to put two little tentacle patches coming out either side. If you're looking down the face of the fly, it'd be like at the 9 and 3 o'clock position. So you can see I kind of have them separated out there and I just pull them into length. Now if you find shorter ones, they tend to be a little bit stiffer, um, but all in all, these guys are going to have some really good movement. All right, we'll make sure we lash those in place super secure. Next up, this is just some silver 
mylar tinsel and that's going to be our base material for our body and we'll ponder some decorative wraps over the top of it. You can get as mild or wild as you want on your intruders. Um, since this one's kind of for fun, we're going to go uh, a couple different colors here and really try to get it dialed in looking cool. Next up, some Vivas holographic tinsel in uh, medium red. Do the same thing here. Just kind of wrap back and forth. I don't mind a little bit of the, uh, the head of the flag getting a little bit bulkier. It doesn't bug me at all. So what we're going to do now is we'll just get that thread out of the way. And I'm really going to wrench down on this Mylar tinsel. It doesn't have a ton of give to it, but that just means you can pull harder. So I'll palmer through the body, creating this nice shiny reflective surface. And next up, we're going to work that red holographic tinsel forward. Just got to get it out of the plumes there. And we're kind of just do a candy cane on this. It doesn't have to be too fancy. You could add more colors and different stuff like that to it as well. And I do a back and forth wrap on that. So next up I have some thin that I mixed up with our, our pearl blue hue. And this I use for reinforcing and uh, you know making sure that this center section is bomb proof. Another really cool trick you can do is you can uh, blend it up with some tungsten to add additional weight to the fly. You can change the fall of the fly by, you know, adding tungsten as well. So it's a really handy application and you can mix any powders and the tungsten powder in and create really cool bodies. You could even do a thread body with uh, pigments and powders and uh, tungsten powder over the top of it. Get a super ultra different look that you know the fish may not have seen. So what we'll do is we'll just gently rotate to level it out a little bit and we'll zap it from there. We have full cure. We'll go ahead and start tying again. We'll go ahead and dub in some more of our ice dub in steely blue. It's the ICE 23. It's, uh, like I said, one of my favorite ice dubs for steelhead. Let's go ahead and make sure it's pretty smooth up there to my next point. Now this little chenille is uh, like the, I think it's called baby body wrap. It's uh, Blaine Shockets uh, for the micro game changers, but it's a really cool chenille in the fact that it uh, provides a lot of bulk without any water retention. So it really helps you, you know, build that teardrop shape. And just a couple wraps will do you. What we'll do is we'll brush it backwards and kind of secure it over itself. But you can see it builds a really solid looking collar. We'll be adding a bunch more materials in there. So 
won't uh, hurt. Now this is some Rhea. It's kind of a fancier feather. I have a few of them around and uh, it's one of the only white feathers that I have, but you could also substitute in ostrich here. Um, and that would have been a, a really, you know, a good option as well. So I do strip that off the off the stem, and it just palmers in super easy. As you can see, it's a little bit finer of a feather. If you guys find them out there, they're pretty cool feathers for steelhead. And again, you don't want to go too heavy on these. You want to make them castable and light and uh, not so gargantuous that it becomes, uh, you know, frustrating to cast or, you know, wears you out at the end of the day. You don't want to, you don't want to go too big. I think this fly tops out at about four inches. So we're going to introduce some more of our, uh, our blue ostrich, kind of that cool royal blue. And these guys I pull off, measure out, and I just kind of place them like I do around a clock. You know, I'll have one at 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and just keep working from there. You can see I kind of get them to bow out a little bit. There's a natural curvature to the feather and uh, it kind of helps. So once I have them all in there, we're going to introduce some of our red flash boo. And you know, you don't want too much flash, but uh, for American Steelhead, they, they kind of like their the hot red flash on there. So I'm going to separate this out a little bit and pull a few, probably had like 20 fibers there, I got a little excited to trim that up, we'll set some aside. We'll just lash that in there and we'll do a little bit down below to give it an overall cool look. Just trim off everything that doesn't uh, totally belong there. And at this point, give it a little trim just to keep it nice and light. Some more silver pheasant in red. And we'll just palmer that forward. You just want to keep brushing those back little bit by little bit as you're moving them forward there as well. And we'll do a few finishing wraps here. I like to do a figure eight over the top of everything. Just feel, it makes me feel like it's secured in there. 
going to be moving really good. And we'll go ahead and whip finish. Next up, we'll bring in some flow. You could use fluorescing flow as well. Both will work great. And just let that saturate through and hit it with the light. Give a little taper cut. Do a little breath test, it still moves. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Happy 4th of July. Cheers.